welcome to CDC by Sunday worship service. Um, today's title is Never Stop Learning, Remembering the Last Supper. Remembering the Last Supper. Um, it's the first week of April. Uh, spring is here. And Easter is near. Um, this year, Easter Sunday is April 17th. We Christians celebrate Easter once a year, regularly, repeatedly. Why do we have this celebration repeatedly once a year? Uh, it's interesting to see uh, Gemma with my iPhone. Technology that I didn't have uh, when, I was a when I was a child. Um, iCloud keeps every picture and movie that I take. So one of Gemma's hobbies is to watch old videos repeatedly. We go back to watch last year's videos and she points out that the green shirt dad was wearing in the video is the one dad is wearing right now. She points out a rocking chair that she did not know how to sit on back then. And now she tried to tell me something like, Dad, I'm an expert at sitting on a rocking chair. As time goes on, we don't see things exactly in the same way. Uh, we normally see different aspects of many things when we grow up, when we experience more. For children at CGC, they may want to hunt for Easter eggs repeatedly <laughs> to get candy year after year. Right? But for you, uh, growing up Christian youth, I pray that in the near future, you would remember your Easter Sundays as eye-opening days and weeks learning and understanding the plan of God's salvation. Maybe for the first time, or more deeply, more richly. So we celebrate Easter repeatedly because, number one, we cannot understand the richness of God's big plan of salvation by attending one Easter Sunday worship service. Number two, the Lord's resurrection is the most important event that has happened in church history. Number three, not only that, it ties in with rich, condensed Christian themes like the cross, salvation, future hope, communion, Passover. It seems like everything in the Bible points to this event. Easter and the last Passover week Jesus lived on earth. Jesus' death and resurrection happened during the week of Passover. So many prophecies and God's plans in the Old Testament were fulfilled in Jesus within that week. Not only that, communion that we Christians perform. Do we perform communion, guys? Uh, CGC adults perform it every month. Actually, today is the first Sunday that they are uh, performing the communion. And CGC Y is going to start to perform it this Easter Sunday, right? I think Anita and Justin will help serve. And uh, thank you for support. It was our first communion for youth and actually that communion is originated from the last supper that I'm talking about. Jesus says do this in remembrance of me and Jesus talks about a new covenant in his blood at the last supper. So um, Old Testament Passover meaning new covenant blood and bread in Jesus' days and 
our church life with communion are all involved in the Last Supper. It's super rich. It's condensed. So I cannot explain everything to you today. So for three weeks, I'm going to deliver messages from the Supper. Today, the title is The Last Supper. Next week, the title will be The Lord's Supper. And on the Easter Sunday, April 17th, we will celebrate the Easter with the Lord's Supper communion. The Church of Jesus Christ has been doing for about 2,000 years in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Today's passage shows the Passover meal that Jesus and his disciples had together right before Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. And he teaches the new covenant with two images of the Passover meal, the bread and wine. So let's read today's verse, uh, verses from Luke 22, 14 through 20, together, 3, 2, 1. And when the hour came, he reclined the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, today's title is The Last Supper, right? Let me ask you a very, very simple question. Whose last supper is it? Jesus' last supper, right? In verse 16, Jesus says, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So it's the last supper of Jesus. But he said, eat I will not eat it. So what is it that Jesus will not eat? What kind of supper is it? Show. And no, sorry. Uh, it is not just a regular dinner and not meat in verse 15. <laughs> find the answer. Jesus commented, comment, commented that it is the Passover meal. So, Jesus had the last Passover meal with his disciples before his death and resurrection, and we call that the last supper of Jesus. Let me pause and let's think about this. Jewish people ate the Passover meal repeatedly once a year for 2,000 years, for 4,000 years, remembering God's salvation from Egypt. But do we celebrate Passover? Show? No. <laughs> we celebrate Easter, Jesus' resurrection, and we eat the bread and drink the wine the Lord's Supper on the Easter day. It's a good church tradition to hold communion, the Lord's Supper, following the Last Supper's ritual as Jesus commanded us to do this in remembrance of Him. So, there are three things going on. The Passover meal from Exodus the Last Supper, that is the last Passover meal of Jesus Christ, and the Lord's Supper, that can be called communion, that we 
will celebrate on Easter. Not like us, as a Jew, Jesus and his disciples knew how to celebrate Passover. I'm sure they memorized Exodus chapter 12, the story of how God saved Israel from Egypt by the blood of the Lamb and its denial, I'm sorry, its detail about how to celebrate the Passover meal and the importance of the unleavened bread. But in Luke chapter 22 that we read today, Jesus asked Peter, find a place to celebrate the Passover meal. And at the Last Supper, in verse 20, Peter heard the new covenant from Jesus. The wine he shared was the blood for the new covenant. Jesus was saying in verse 19 that the bread is Jesus' body. In addition, you may remember John the Baptist taught Peter in John chapter 1, Jesus is the Lamb of God. So many images and symbolisms are there, even with all the teachings and experiences that Peter had with Jesus. I'm pretty sure that Peter didn't understand <laughs> What Jesus meant at the time, at the Last Supper. Because right after this wonderful last meal with Jesus, he disowned Jesus three times. Right? Peter heard and learned, but didn't truly know that Jesus was the Passover lamb who needed to die for humanity. If he did, if he had, he would have known and would not have denied Jesus, but he repented later and later. In Acts, he became a leader of the church and shared the gospel of Jesus with others while leading the Lord's Supper, communion again and again, maybe learning new perspectives about what Jesus said, what Jesus meant by remembrance of him. So now, as a follower of Jesus Christ, what do you need to remember from the Last Supper? First, learn new Things every Sunday, every time you read the Bible. Because God's plan is much bigger than you know. For example, to understand and to study Luke chapter 22, you need to check 4,000 years of events from the Old Testament and the New. God designed it that way in His history. So the Bible is well-crafted, divinely-crafted. I think I have read the entire Bible more than 20 times, but I don't think it is enough. You need to study it, learn it correctly, and you need to apply it in your life, right? Reading 20 times is nothing when you think about the correct knowledge and applied life. I'm not sure uh, how many elements that I have explained to you today actually got into your brain, not to mention getting into your heart. So, repeatedly learning about the past that God captured in the Bible is important. Even understanding the layers of the meanings of the words like the Passover and the Lord's Supper is not easy. It's a lot, I know. 
So your pastor learned again and again. I learned many, many new things last week. And I learned many, many new things every time when I read the Bible. So if you say that I didn't learn anything new today, then oh, ho, ho. <laughs> come on. <laughs> try to read the entire Bible. Try to read a lot and try to apply every Bible verse in your life once. Just, I really wanted to say this. You need to change your attitude. Many people often tell me that they didn't learn anything new today. But come on. Memorizing one simple fact is for kids. When you are going, growing up, you are going to be adults, right? Learn more, more deeply. Repeat to learn God's great salvation and know it more. Deeply find correct and different aspects of the gospel. You see the beautiful gospel, the diamond of the gospel from different angles. Everywhere it's so beautiful, but it's like different facet. If you say I didn't learn anything new today or I already knew everything then, you really do not know anything. You may be like Peter, who was very sure about following Jesus until the end, and denied him three times. So be humble and learn the multifaceted truth of God repeatedly. Let me close today's message. Um, you may not be able to imagine the day when you will become old. How old are you guys? Less than 20, right? <laughs> Because you are too young and you are very strong. And you will get stronger. But one day your physical strength will become smaller. When you become 40, maybe 50. But only a humble person gets stronger spiritually, although their body may become weaker every year. And you know what? It's normally difficult to be humble when you get older. So I pray that remembering the wonderful salvation that Jesus proclaimed us in the Last Supper. Everyone sees the humongous plan of God and the rich and deep words of God so that you may become more humble every day, revisiting the way of God and learning lots of deeper angles and perspectives that you may become wiser Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today's message. Uh, Jesus came to earth. and he, You lived a full life and taught us this wonderful message at the Lord at the Last Supper. As we Christians, uh, sometimes we just uh, read the Bible and listen to the Sunday sermon, just surface level only, but Lord, please help us, correct us, give us that uh, uh, passion and uh, urgency that we need to be, we need to come nearer to you, we need to be humble before you. As growing up youth, and as every young people normally do, and even older people, do it every time that we are not humble, Lord. So Lord, please teach us and show us your ways and give us that um, desire to learn about you, new perspectives and new uh, uh, 
lessons every time from you, like you captured and you packed so rich meaning in the Bible. So help us to be humble before you and learn more things about you every single time. So we can grow up humble and we can be more mature and wiser every time. Amen. Bless our uh, first communion that we are going to uh, perform two weeks later. Teach us about your uh, Lord's Supper uh, this week, next week, and this Easter day. And help us to remember your wonderful salvation by faith. Thank you so much for today's message. I prayed in Christ's name.